Speed Mutant Apocalypse for the Super Nintendo, it was suggested that my nostalgia for the X-Men arcade game was ill-placed and that I wasn't remembering things properly. After playing through this game for the first time in over a decade, I'm going to respectfully disagree. The glory I remember feeling years ago is still very much so alive in this port. Few things are more satisfying than being a member of the X-Men team, and in late 2010, a port of the X-Men arcade game made its way to the Xbox Live Arcade. Initially, it was $10, but it's recently had a price drop to 5 For 5 bucks, I'll buy a port of any game I remotely enjoyed as a child. A chance to preserve nostalgia in a newer-gen console is something I can't let pass me by. This is a 2D side-scrolling beat-em-up, the best kind of side-scroller there is. Button mash and try not to be overwhelmed by enemies as you make your way through some interesting environments. You can jump, rain down some death from above with a flying kick, or just straight up attack your foes head on. You have a special attack that will completely ruin anyone in the blast radius save for bosses, but you're limited to one per life, and an extra that's awarded at the end of each level. Story-wise, you're off to stop Magneto. Big surprise there. But the villains chosen are pretty spectacular, and at the end of each level, you'll be fighting one of them. Progressively, you encounter a non-bitchy version of Pyro, Mystique, Juggernaut, the White Queen, and others. Honestly, in contrast to how hard some of the regular through-level fights can be with large amounts of Sentinels and other level-specific enemies surrounding you, the boss fights feel a little anticlimactic. On the other hand, it's nice to utterly destroy someone who actually has a name. So at some point, Professor and Kitty Pride have been captured, which is where the tie-in with Pride of the X-Men comes in. I'm okay with the character designs in this title, but I'm really happy they literally went back to the drawing board for the X-Men animated series in 92. You can play as Wolverine, Cyclops, yeah right, Nightcrawler, Storm, Colossus, and Dazzler. Few notes on the characters, Wolverine is weak compared to Nightcrawler. Seriously, play as Nightcrawler and watch the Sentinels fly to their explosive doom. And every time I hear Dazzler's name mentioned, I groan. Even as a kid, I knew she wasn't going to be that great of a character, but at least in this game, she stays away from singing and manages to be a little cool. I would go out on a limb and say in this title, she's actually more useful of a character than Wolverine. <laughs> Not much has changed in this port. The graphics are untainted and the level setup is exactly the same. The heads-up display has been adapted a tad, but at a glance, which is all you really have time for, you barely notice a change. The Xbox Live Arcade version offers support for four to six players, but honestly, why the hell would you ever cut it down to four players? The screen crops from 16x9 to 4x3 and you lose half of the environment. Plus, the six-player arcade cabinet was insane. The widescreen setup blew me away when I finally made it into an arcade, and the wait to play was a lot less with all those extra spaces to fill. Moving this into the 360, it's nice to have six people playing on screen. Online multiplayer has all of the options available locally, and I do love that I can play this game with a friend who isn't in the room, who just so happens to be feeling some love for X-Men like I am. Upon initial release, this title was only available on the Xbox Live Arcade and the PlayStation Network. Recently, the X-Men Arcade game has seen releases to iPod Touches, iPads, and Android devices, but I don't know how well it'll work out with that tiny screen. If anyone out there gives it a shot, be sure to respond to this with your opinion. In the meantime, I'm gonna go be Kurt a little while longer. Who needs adamantium claws when I have a low kick?